glad you're uh, joining me for just about five minutes to talk a little bit more about spiritual things in church. Yes, that sounds silly. Maybe it is silly, but that's the best title I could come up with for the sermon series we're in. We've actually gone through six weeks already, and uh, the, the focus is on what the Holy Spirit enables believers in Christ to do. And we're focusing on 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. And uh, when we started this series a while back, I started out with 1 Corinthians 13. And it seems like an interesting place to start, perhaps, for a study of the manifestation of spiritual gifts. But it goes to motive, just like uh, Ben Matlock used to say on TV. It goes to motive, Your Honor, and our motives determine how it is that we manage the heavenly blessings that God gives to his children. If our motives are good, and if they're correct, well, then the, we're going to see fruit from the use of those gifts. If our motives are not, well, then we're going to see fruit, but it's not going to be good fruit. Started off this series in chapter 13, but let me do this. Let me read the last verse of 1 Corinthians 12. So you should earnestly desire the most helpful gifts, but now... Let me show you a way of life that is best of all. Wow, that's a power-packed sentence. Paul was writing to them. He had gone over talking about these nine gifts that he mentioned, as well as some of the ministry gifts to the church that he references towards the end of chapter 12. But now he says, listen, uh, we should seek the, the, uh, the most appropriate gift. I guess I could translate it that way. But, he says, but... Let me show you a way of life that is best of all. And what follows is probably one of the most beloved chapters of the Bible, 1 Corinthians 13, and it's called the love chapter. Uh, you hear it at weddings, and I guess that's okay, but that really isn't the kind of love it's talking about, although certainly love for a spouse is, is a, a necessary for a good marriage. But in this case, Paul is specifically talking about the love for one another in the church. Uh, so many of the problems that the church in Corinth was having was interpersonal relationships. Uh, they were being used in these uh, supernatural gifts of the Spirit. But some of the ways that they were going about church life wasn't God-honoring. So Paul takes a whole chapter, of course, we made it a chapter, he didn't, a whole section of his letter talking about love. And chapter 13, verse 1 says, if I could speak all the languages of earth and angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I was able to speak in tongues of men and angels, other translation puts it, but I had not love just be making a bunch of noise. So while it's important that we seek uh, the deeper things of God and that we, we earnestly desire to be used uh, in manifestation of spiritual, spiritual gifts, it has to be because of love. Love for God, love for one another in the church, and ultimately love for those who are lost and in need of a Savior. You know, the heart attitude says a lot about a person. The heart attitude uh, tells why we do what we do. In the church, if we do what we do just to make a name for ourselves, if we do what we do uh, just to look good on the outside, if we do what we do for uh, social status elevation, Motives are all wrong, and we need to stop, go back, turn off the power, turn it back on, reboot, and get a godly perspective on heavenly things. I hope you have a godly perspective on heavenly things. Let's pray together. Father God, I thank you for your incredible love for us. I thank you that you loved us so much that even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
and that that love and that sacrifice was sufficient for all time. I thank you, Lord, that you have shown us this kind of love so that we can in turn love others the same way. And a big part of how we love others is how we interact within the church, the representation of Jesus on earth, the hands and feet of Jesus. So, Father, I pray you forgive us when we uh, get contrary and want our own way. I, I pray that you forgive us when we start to think of ourselves better than another. I pray that you'll forgive us when we need to have attention. And I pray that uh, you encourage us to be more and more like Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you have made the supernatural available to just ordinary men and women, born again by your spirit, filled with your spirit, equipped by your spirit to do incredible things in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this time together and for all who are joining me today. Lord, I pray your blessing upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Amen.